So today we're going to look into how to use AI to generate ideas. Now, I think it is ideas and inspiration, but we also want to talk about is it a replacement? I don't think we're there yet, but let me know what you think in the comments. So for today's video, we're going to be using an AI image generator called Midjourney. Now there are definitely others out there, things like Dolly, Stable Diffusion, and even just some general apps you can get on your phone. But we're going to use Midjourney just because I think it's been the one that I've seen the most that have some really compelling results when it comes to design. So interior design, spatial design, architectural design. Now it is coming as a kind of beta test free trial at the moment. And the free trial gives you about 25 jobs, but after that you'll um, need to pay for a subscription. Uh, and it also uses the Discord app. So Discord, I think a lot of times you'll see that gamers use it and um, people like that, but essentially it is kind of a messaging chat forum type um, platform that you use to interact with the bot. And that's going to be how you generate your images. So to get started, you do need to go and join the beta and sign in. And this means you're going to have to also create a Discord account. Um, I'm not going to go through that here because I think it is pretty um, straightforward. If you just go to midjourney.com, click join the beta and make sure if you haven't already joined Discord as well. And then you'll be using the um, Discord app to access the Midjourney bot. So once you've signed up for your account and you've logged in onto Discord, you want to make sure you are in the mid-journey space. And importantly, this is going to be public. Um, you can, I think, pay for some of the more private spaces, but they obviously cost um, some money. And so as a trial and as a newcomer, you're going to be using these public uh, rooms here. So go find your a newcomer room. Um, I'm just in this one here. And essentially there are a couple of ways you can do this. Now there are so many like tips and tricks you can find online on mid journey. So I'm just going to go through the basics here. Um, but essentially it is something that can become a really powerful tool in terms of giving you ideas. Now we're going to go into how it's not perfect. It's not a complete replacement, especially, um, right now. Um, but hopefully this demonstration will prove maybe it's not so scary, but actually really exciting. So first things first, I let's imagine a new kitchen design. So I'm going to do a kitchen interior and we're going to go for, um, Maybe something with muted greens and kind of wood accents as well as kind of, I don't know, vintage tile or something um, and kind of go for like a traditional cottage vibe. So we need to think through what we're asking the mid journey bot to imagine. So first things first in our message, we want to go slash imagine. And this is our prompt. So we click on it and now we need to type in our prompt. So here we go. It's going to be interior design kitchen with muted greens, um, wood, vintage tile, uh, traditional and cottage style. Um, let's say black and white accents, something like that. And let's see what it gives us. So once you've typed in your prompt and press enter, you want to scroll all the way down because that will be kind of where you're going to be finding this kind of stuff. Now it works really fast. And again, it's all public. So you're going to want to look for your kind of result in the, the options here. Now, the good news is that the it should highlight your response kind of in like a little orangey color um, so hopefully we can get that going here and there we go it's processing my ideas so let's go back to where those are there we go so if we look here i'm actually gonna make it bigger it's actually quite nice because it plays around with, you know, maybe a little more illustrated presentation of a kitchen design, something that's a little bit more like furniture board with um, 
uh, kind of a realistic visual, another kind of collage type, and kind of two visuals going on here. Now, it gives you these four options. So I'm actually going to open in browser. So we have this version here. And I'm going to save these options just because I think it's a good kind of thing to have as a, a starting point. All right, now let's go back to Discord. Now, what we want to do now is either tell the Midjourney bot that we either want to, maybe you want to regenerate, maybe you don't like any of these, um, or you can either upscale one. So maybe you really love this one and you want to make it a higher quality image that you can play around with. Or maybe you want to get other options based off of a particular um, version. Now, they run from clockwise, so or not clockwise, they run from kind of left to right. So this is ver version 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if you wanted to upscale version 3, you click here. If you wanted different versions of version 4, you'd click here. And if you just think it, it missed the mark, you just want to um, redo it there. Um, I actually think I want to change my prompt a little bit. Maybe this green is just a little bit too cool. Um, so I'm going to add some words to make the, the green a little bit more like I was hoping. So I'm going to copy this and let's go back to imagine and we're going to click to our prompt. This is our prompt muted earthy greens, um, vintage tile, Let's just do brass hardware. Um, I'm going to do yellowish greens. See if we can make it a little warmer. And yeah, let's see what see what this does. Enter. So again, we've asked it. And you can see mine's over here. It's waiting to start. Um, there's other people kind of working on it right now. And... Let's see. Ah, here we go. It's it's generating, um, and we can start to see what options it's going to give give us. Almost looks like it's going to go blue here. All right, so I think it should be there now. It's a matter of finding it. Ah, here we go. So let's see what's going on here. I actually think this one is a little bit more on point. Like maybe it didn't quite get the green right, but the, again, this is the kind of thing that you as a designer will need to start making more finite choices. But part of me starts to like this one. I also kind of like this one. Um, you know what? Let's, let's up, um, let's make new versions of this one. So I am going to open this in my browser and I want to save it again. Um, just because it's kind of nice to have some inspiration um, to fall back on in this regard. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is let's do one, two, three, four. Let's do some more versions of three. Here we go. So let's look at this one. And again, I want to open it where we can see it really big. And again, I mean, it's kind of gone with this collage style here. Um, that I think, you know, works pretty well to help explain an idea. If I am really, you know, looking at it in detail, I want to think about which one makes the most sense for me to take forward. Maybe I'm going to go with this one. And so let's do just an upscale version of this one. So I am going to save this. And there we go. Let me find it. <laughs> Now, I'm sure there are probably some easy ways to, to kind of find your work for people who use this every day, but you know, I might be just like you and very much a beginner with this. So I'm trying to embrace the excitement that it can bring to an interior design process rather than being just a little bit terrified about it. Okay, so I think this one works and I wanna choose this one. So I'm gonna upscale version three. And keep in mind that when you are working in the trial, I think you have like 25 different um, things to do, so it can go quickly. Um, 
but you know if you find that this is a really exciting process for you then you could certainly um, subscribe because um, I do think there is a lot of opportunity here and even just gives you ideas on you know communication styles and things like that the upscaling will take a little bit more time so just something to, to keep in mind as well. Ah, here we go. So it's upscaled it. Let me open it up again, save it. And now we actually have a really nice kind of direction all based off of a, you know, a few prompts that to just give us ideas. Now I wanted to show you how you can take this as an idea one step further. So this is giving you just kind of like more or less an idea in abstract, but we work with real spaces. So how can we start to apply some of these ideas to our actual project spaces? So I'm going to do a new thing and I'm going to actually add in an image. So I can either upload it here with this little plus button or I can just drag and drop it over in. And I just want to upload this file. So I am going to press enter. And again, be, comfortable, be aware that you're gonna be adding these things um, in public. So we've added this, you know, kitchen. It's a messy kitchen um, and it's in the UK, so that's why there's laundry machines in there. Uh, but we're gonna apply what we just did with our prompt and with this image. Now, once it's uploaded, we want to click it, right click, and copy image address. And now we want to ask Midjourney to imagine this with our kitchen design. So I'm going to go imagine. And we're going to add that URL that we just copied. And then we're going to give it the same prompt that we did before. Now, I want it to do the exact same things. I'm going to copy and paste the prompt that I did before. Um, I think if you're using this as part of a process, I would really recommend being a little bit more systematized with your process rather than just scrolling around and copying and pasting, but hopefully it all works. There we go. Enter. So we've sent the command and it's waiting to start. All right, so it took a little bit of time, but it has created a version of that kitchen according to our image. Now, I I want to highlight that this is where I think the technology is at. I think, you know, I could probably be a lot smarter with my um, kind of prompts and really play around with how it works, but it's not perfect. It has kind of mimicked the long linear shape of the kitchen, but in the opposite way. Um, the window is on the short side instead of the long side, and it's just not quite achieving what would need to be accurate for this to be a proper interior design. I am going to open it in my browser and save it though, because I think it's helpful. But I think at the moment, this really does highlight how we still as a designer need to take inspiration um, and really refine it, analyze it, and think about how it could apply to a design. So going back to the design that I ended up really liking, I would want to go through and really think carefully about whether or not this is the appropriate design for the brief and for the client, um, as well as for any like, conceptual direction we're taking with the project. Um, I can be really happy with this overall look, but I'm going to have to make a lot of decisions when it comes to layout. I'm going to have to make a lot of decisions when it comes to specifics in terms of color, finishes, um, textiles, uh, and different fixtures and features within the, the design. So I think this is something to highlight that it is an amazing tool for helping you generate some ideas. Um, but there are limits to it for the time being. And I think that's the kind of thing that you need to capitalize on your own abilities to take on a brief, either having a really good understanding of your residential client or a really in-depth understanding of your commercial client and applying that information to figuring out the best application of different ideas, just like you would analyze different precedent projects or kind of inspirational images that were given to you from the client, you're going to need to do the same thing with the 
images you generate with AI. The good thing though is you can actually help generate some maybe more specifics from your more specific inspiration images from these kind of verbal prompts. You could imagine if you take the words of a client um, who might not completely be uh, aware that they're being either vague or they're being um, maybe too specific that you could take the words and actually show them kind of like so this is kind of ideas that this kind of brings up and you're doing it without having to spend all of your time on this um, kind of idea and instead you're doing it really efficiently to help you pinpoint exactly what is going on in terms of the design. I also want to highlight that this does not take away from my own creativity. I still think that, you know, there's opportunities to create some more, you know, interesting details here, uh, give a little bit more character. I also think your uh, skills when it comes to space planning will still become very important because I don't think this is quite, um, you know, uh, as much of an idea as much as it is like a style idea. Um, but again, you can certainly play with it in those regards, but just always keep in mind that there are so many other decisions and so many other factors to consider that at the moment, even this really impressive technology just hasn't quite gotten there. And last but not least, I did want to point out that there are still some ongoing c concerns and questions when it comes to the legality of this kind of um, software. So obviously it's using a whole repository of images to really develop and imagine, for the lack of a better word, what is the prompt based off of, based off of the images in its repository. Now, the question that has come up in certain lawsuits that are ongoing is whether or not these images are copyrighted or are they being used in kind of fair use or is there enough of a um, kind of refinement that just means that it's not the same work anymore. So, I think there's definitely room to keep an eye on this space because it's going to be something that eventually will have an impact on how we can use this software um, moving forward. But at the moment, I do think, you know, it's a lot of fun. You can really start to, to give yourself some ideas that maybe you you aren't able to necessarily pinpoint specifically, but you can actually help um, yourself visualize them by running them through the, the software. And again, it's not perfect. I mean, in my head, I still think this is not the right kind of green palette that um, I was going for. And it's still, you know, there's some, some interesting kind of ideas here, but there's aspects of it that just aren't quite um, up to kind of fulfilling a, a brief specifically. So take it with a grain of salt, but hopefully this shows you how you can definitely have a little bit of fun and start imagining how you can use this type of software in your process as an embracing it rather than fearing it.